Hello and welcome to this iMesh video. So today I'm going to talk about displacement, mainly because I keep seeing this uh, people do an error. Uh, there's like a mistake in their displacement and I don't think people realize is what causes this. I wanted to talk about that. I thought I might as well also talk about displacement and how to set it up anyway, because it's not easy for some reason. Um, and you could end up getting a, a midlife crisis in the middle of trying to set it up because it's not very easy. Um, and yeah, so let's just jump straight in. So I thought I might as well just show you how it works in Corona Render because this is Corona. I've basically just loaded it up, added a box. I'm gonna turn on the render preview and then let's add displacement. I'm gonna take my displacement map, plug it in. Boom, finished. That wasn't hard, was it? So let's do it in Blender. Okay, so inside Blender, we want to use displacement. And when I'm talking about displacement, I'm talking about, about micro displacement or adaptive subdivision. Because basically what, what I'm talking about is that Blender is able to change the level of detail in your model depending on how far you are away from the model so that it saves on performance. Uh, because otherwise, if we have, let's say, this texture, we can see this texture has a very sharp edge and it, we want the displacement to look like this. It should be like a stripy displacement. But in its current form, if I just get this displacement node, plug this into here, we'll see that it does a very bad job. It, it adds a little bit of bump there, but in general, the geometry is really bad. So a way to fix that is if you want to do it manually, add some extra loop cuts. And there we go, the displacement already looks a lot better. And we can also improve that. We can go back into edit mode, right click and subdivide a few times. And now we're getting a much sharper edge, which is much closer to the actual texture, which we were looking for to start with. But you can already see that we need so much subdivision to actually make that happen. So that's when we want to use adaptive subdivision or micro displacement, or I think this all refers to the same thing. Um, and, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. And that's basically what Corona was doing in that other example is, is all the same thing where we want, if the object is really far away, we don't want that to be super subdivided because it, you won't see it in the, in the shot. So let's show you how to set up micro displacement. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to set up the micro displacement. So the first thing I want to do is go over to the render settings and set this to experimental because, you know, it's been experimental since like Blender 2.79. So, you know, it's not enough time to make it uh, not experimental. I just think that's a bit crazy. It's still experimental. Then what you want to do is make sure you're on the object and give it a subdivision surface. In my case, I don't want it to subdivide like this um, because I thought the mesh that was already there was perfectly fine. So I'm gonna set this to simple. Then what I'm gonna do is set this to adaptive. The next thing I'm gonna do is go over to the materials tab and scroll all the way down and set this to displacement only. Now the thing is displacement only is true displacement. So it will displace uh, in very, very fine detail and it's gonna be quite memory intensive, but very accurate. And what we have here is displacement and bump. So that is like a more optimized version. And that is generally the one you want to use most of the time, because often you're going to have a bump mapping as well, which is going to do the finer details where the displacement is just going to be like the overall shape of this displacement. So this one's going to be the one to use most of the time, but I don't have any bump mapping or anything. So I'm just going to use displacement only for true displacement. Then what I want to do is add a uh, shift a S. And, and type in displace, displacement. And then what I'm gonna do is plug that into height and plug that into displacement. And there we go, we have a displacement. I'm gonna set this to 0.1. And there we go, that's perfect. So the displacement that we already ha that we have, just so you can see what it looks like, is simply gonna be this. And in general, if you're using a .exr, you probably wanna set this to linear. And yeah, then that's good to go. Okay, so that's basically all set up. The thing that you want to keep note of is that if your displacement looks a little bit odd, usually you can fix it by going to uh, the render settings, scroll all the way down to uh, subdivision, and you want to lower this value. So normally it's set to, I think, uh, one and eight. And for the viewport, just while you're working around, so a higher value is better, just so that the viewport is more fluid, but you can set this to a low value like two, and you can see that it's already cleaned up. Generally, you don't really want to go below one. That's going to be fine for nearly all instances. And if you set this to something like 0.5, it's suddenly going to take so much more time and your GPU is probably going to blow up and burn and suddenly you don't have a computer. 
your client at that moment calls you and says that they need them renders this evening, but your computer's just got up and burned. You're unable to save it, so you cannot complete this work. Your client is furious, and they say that the job is cancelled, but you can't afford to buy a new computer because they've just cancelled the job. So you are stuck without work. You end up losing more and more clients, and in the end, you can't afford your rent. That landlord comes to you eventually and kicks you out of the house. You and your family are stuck without anywhere to go. Your wife and child moves to their parents' place to get some much loving support, but you can't go with them. You've ruined their life. You can't face seeing them in this way. So you find some little junkyard and you find this little caravan and you start living in there, but the days just get longer and longer. So you turn to alcohol, but you only find joy in the bottom of a bottle. You spend the rest of your days just being a drunk nothing. You've lost all contact with your family, but nothing is dulling the pain. You end up walking to this dodgy area, which you've heard about, and you see this mysterious looking guy with a long trench coat. You move over to him and you ask him the question, do you have the good stuff? When you speak to him, he's looking down. He tilts up his head just slightly that you can see his eyes from underneath his hat. He glances at you and says, I got the good stuff. You make the deal and you go find a dark, dingy alley. You sit in the end of this dark alley. You sit in the corner next to piles of rubbish and you get out this new package and you use it and for a moment, you forget about everything. Your life is in bliss for that very short moment and you forget about the woes of your life. You end up chasing the next fix, turning to crime to pay for your new addiction. You don't have a house, you live on the streets, you have no friends and you're lost in the world. Suddenly you find yourself passed out in a park. You have your eyes closed, but the sun is beating against your face. The light from the sun is suddenly covered as if something has just moved in the way. You open your eyes and it's your friend Carl from school. He looks down on you with a heartwarming smile and says, do you need help? You immediately try to push him away, but in the end you give in and he offers you a place to stay for the night. It's a very slow, quiet ride to his place. He doesn't ask any questions, but you can feel that he's there for you. You get to his place and for the first time in months you have a nice warm shower. You clean yourself up and it feels like you've just been reborn. He makes you some food and you eat like you've never eaten before. He says that you can stay here for as long as you need. And you say, no, I'll be out in the next day. But weeks go by and you find yourself getting cleaner and cleaner and life is getting better again. And one evening he sits next to you watching TV and he gets out his laptop. He starts doing some work, but ultimately puts the laptop down. You glance over at the laptop and you think, I'm gonna have a play with this. You find a tutorial from a guy on YouTube who's telling you how to do displacement. And you think to yourself, today I'm gonna learn how to do displacement properly. You create the scene, but you make sure you don't set the subdivision dicing rate to lower than one. It's not worth it. You hit the render button and it renders. You close your eyes and tilt your head down with a smile on your face and think, I've done it. And from that moment on, you know that your life is going to be better. But you look at your displacement and you realize that something is wrong. The displacement looks a little bit odd. So you think to yourself, I'm gonna continue watching this video and work out what I did wrong. Okay, so now let's talk about a common problem that I keep seeing in people's displacement and they don't seem to understand what is happening. So let's say you have imported a floor plan because we are an architectural visualization channel. Uh, you've, imp you've imported a floor plan, you've imported the CAD and you just press A and press F and you fill that space. You then unwrap it and then you add displacement. And then let's, let's just set this to a decent value like like four, so we're working on the scene and we can see that there's loads and loads and loads of jagged edges. In general, it's not very uniform and, it, and you can lower this value, but you end up needing to go quite low before all the edges are totally gone. So we're even at two here and there's tons and tons of edges. So what's causing that? So basically with, with adaptive subdivision, you're subdividing the mesh and then it's gonna use that subdivided mesh to then calculate where the edges should, should rise and fall. And to show you what's happening here, because we have an n-gon, Blender is trying to subdivide this n-gon. So if I turn this off, I set this to a no value like six, and then apply that. We can see that all these edges are not straight. None of them are straight. And yet the map that we're using, which will be, for example, a terrace floor or some bricks or some tiles, that's gonna have straight lines. And we can see here is trying to subdivide this mesh and it's a complete mess. Um, this is obviously a much more exaggerated example and this one doesn't have adaptive subdivision anyway. But that is basically what's happening. That is trying to subdivide a, an n-gon to be used for a displacement map which has straight lines. So it's very simple to fix. So what we're gonna do is just go into edit mode, add a point here with control R, 
And then I'm just going to, uh, with this turned on, with Shift Tab, I'm gonna press GG to slide this along and here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is just hold down Shift and, and press J. And then what I'm gonna do is I do the same here. So let's bring this up here and join these together. And now we don't have n-gons, so we should expect that what we're gonna find is a much cleaner edge. And what we can see here is that the edges are much cleaner. So as an example, let's set this, do this, set this to something like a much more reasonable like a value of four. We can see that some edges are slightly jagged, um, but it is trying to subdivide the mesh based on how far away it is from the camera. But if I was to select this mesh, and limited, dis limited dissolve to remove all the inside edges, we can then see immediately all these edges have all come back. So if I undo that, we can see that it's much more uniform. So Blender is then subdividing the mesh like this in a much more uniform manner, which, is, which reflects the displacement map better. So we get a much better representation. Whereas if you set something like this, we're gonna have so many jagged edges and the only way to fix it is just to keep reducing this value, which is really not ideal. You shouldn't really need to with such a with such a displacement map. So that is the problem I keep seeing and, and it's a very simple fix. So what you just wanna make sure that you remember is you want your mesh, even though you're doing adaptive subdivision, you still want your mesh to follow the direction of your displacement map. So if it's a tiles, if, it, if it's wood flooring, or anything that has straight lines, or even if it's a pattern which is diagonal like this, it would be ideal to cut up your mesh that follows a very similar pattern. So then you don't need to have such a low value or even a value which is too low that you won't have any errors. So yeah, that's basically that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, <laughs> And I hope you didn't have an absolute life crisis in the middle. And um, yeah, thank you for watching and we will see you soon. Oh, uh, subscribe.